Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to One Soccer. I'm your host for today, Josh Deming. It will just be me today. Alex is flying back to BC. So we're doing just a nice vent session. Go through the chat, have some fun, talk about what went wrong. I, I tweeted out earlier, the good, the bad, the ugly. Give a lot of takeaways and hopefully talk about what needs to be done to the, maybe the starting 11, the tactics, and everything leading up to our next match against Guatemala. But first things first, guys, hopefully if you are enjoying the chat so far, I want to hear one thing from you. And I'm going to put it in the chat. Your biggest takeaway. This is going to be a takeaway session stream. Because I have a lot of tweets to bring up from several different people. And... I want to hear from you guys. There's a lot to break down last night. I think we're going to start with the starting 11. It seems like the obvious thing because even before the match started, there were several question marks about the starting 11. A lot of players obviously seem like they weren't in their proper positions and it should be a, I don't know, a good breakdown. Cause I had several thoughts on, on that. And then just after seeing the match, I think what most people thought of where players should be playing, it's, Probably where they should be playing, but let me get some uh, let me get some tweets up for you guys here. Um, I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab the starting eleven actually first, just to show you guys what it looked like, and we can go through player by player, kind of maybe do a little bit of a ratings, talk about how how they matched up. But there was there was some stuff I did like. I don't want to get completely negative. This is a a pretty disappointing result. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. We tied. 2-2 against Guadeloupe. This is a side that we should be expected to win, whether it's our A side, B side, C side. And I want to first touch on Guadeloupe. They weren't that bad. They were actually pretty good. They, a lot of people said that they may, might have deserved a little bit more from this match, and I could see it. I think from what I saw last night between Guatemala and Cuba, it wouldn't surprise me if Guadeloupe actually made it out of the group. There are some good players in this side that are playing in top five leagues, scoring goals in Belgium. Like, this is a decent side. However, Canada is still expected to win this match. And especially after the dreadful first half they had, they went on to the second half, found a good recovery, and then they couldn't hold on. Set pieces come back to bite us in the butt once again. And we go with a 2-2 draw, getting booed off at home in the only match in Canada in the 2023 Gold Cup. So I'm going to go into the chat right now and just see how you guys are doing. And then we're going to just break down the starting eleven what we thought, and then I have a ton of different takeaways that I got from what I thought, what some colleagues thought, and even from what some of you guys thought on uh, on Twitter. So if you guys are just joining us, drop a like and let me know your biggest takeaway down below. We're going to start off with the first comment of the day. Luke Kerr says, I can't believe we didn't win. A lineup was so weird. It was. And that's, I mean, that's already seems like a trend. I'm unhappy with the squad selection. No Schwan here, no. Okay, so you're, you're even going further past the starting eleven. Now, we'll get to Matthew Schwanier. Matthew Schwanier not being in this uh, team is disappointing from not getting selected in the original 23. And then after bringing in Frazier and Jaden Nelson, it's still a head scratcher. Then there was some, you know, thought like, is he injured? What's going on with Matthew Schwanier? Well, he's going to an all-star game because he's an all-star. He's playing that well this season for CF Montreal. He should be in this Canadian side. And to be honest, this would have been a match where he could have potentially started and made a difference. Um, I'll, and I'll get into that later. I want to go through a few more comments before we get into the, the starting 11. Uh, good morning. After a disappointing result last night, it was disappointing. I mean, getting through with a 2-1 win would have been a bit of a different mindset coming into this stream. I would have been in a bit of a happier mood because, you know, it, a little adversity going down early. This team was no pushover, and I don't know if the Canadians thought they would be because they're not a FIFA ranked nation, but there are, like I said, some good ballers in this side. They put up a good effort, had good tactics. They put up a good fight. Some, like I said, said that they might have deserved to beat Canada, which is, is fair. But at the end of the day, I still think the Canadians probably did enough where they could have got the result. They had it. And then the last pretty much kick of the game, set piece, we concede, a tough way to concede. And all of a sudden, we take one point and we need some big results coming up against Guatemala and Cuba. But like I also mentioned, let me know if you watched that match last night between Guatemala and Cuba. Like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if Guadeloupe and Canada are the two to prevail from this group because I wasn't overly impressed from what I saw last night between the other two nations. 
Starting too slow, tall center back was a huge mistake. And that's where we're going to pick up on today, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a look at the starting 11. And, and I'm just going to go player by player and tell you guys what I think. Maybe even give a rating. Um, you guys can toss in some player ratings in the comments. But I'm going to go through the starting 11 and just tell you kind of what I was thinking for each position and how they lined up. So obviously Canada lines up in a 3-5-2 system. This wasn't a big surprise to me. However, like I said, a Matthew Schwanier would have been a huge addition to that midfield for a little bit more creativity. I don't think Vittoria and McGraw, I didn't really know how they would combine well together. I had a feeling that when Vittoria didn't play, it would be McGraw in the middle of a back three, if that's indeed how we're going to play. Zach McGraw, I thought, did well. There was moments where uh, the opposition was coming down. He showed good defensive awareness. He's very good with blocking the ball, getting in front of the player. Like he did that well, but the speed was an issue. And I think that McGraw is better suited as he's playing for Portland in a back four, or probably, like I said, in the middle of this back three. So that was one big concern that happened to me is I don't think going forward in a back three, McGraw and Victoria are ideal. They don't complement each other really at all. Victoria had a shocker. This is one of the worst games I've seen from him, which is unexpected. Victoria is a usually a pretty reliable player for the Canadian men's national team. He just there was two or three times where he just didn't look up, he didn't look up to match sharpness. And I don't know what what it is if it's just a a, a little break or if he's not fully fit. I mean, we didn't know he didn't start in the Nations League final, which was a bit of a surprise. I was honestly surprised to even see him called up in this roster. But he he had like I said, I mean, he's usually a, he can usually give a game for Canada about like a an eight. He's usually a good for an eight. He's a, he's a good player for Canada. And today was one of the worst matches I've seen from him. He just, the speed definitely was a bit of an issue going up against some quick Guadalupe uh, attackers. And then just, I don't think having McGraw to his side was the coverage that he needed where he could have like someone like Alistair Johnston. So uh, Miller was, was decent. I mean, I don't think anyone in the back line really played overly well. Uh, Borean, I know it was a big, big surprise for a lot of you guys didn't want to see him in net, which is, which is fair. I do think Borean played relatively well. On that first goal, look when, when he came off his line, he, he slipped a little bit. Um, I don't know if that would have made a difference of him saving it or not, but I do wish that this would have been a tournament for Dane St. Clair. I think a lot of you guys would, but I don't really put anything on Borean last night. Uh, I thought he was fine. I just think a big issue, and I'm gonna going to get to it when I get to Bombito, is that when we play with possession and we play against nations where we're expected to have a lot of the ball, Someone who's a little bit better with their feet could come in handy. And that's where Dane St. Clair could come into play. Borean, great shot stopper. We know that. But when it comes to distribution, playing with his feet, he can get caught in sticky situations. And not that that was overly important for last night's match, but I do think it's something to consider going forward. And then we get into the midfield where, I mean, it's tough because I want to bring up a tweet um, that Alex did last night. And then we're going to go in the chat a little bit as I uh, talk about this, but. It's about right here. So, I mean, I don't know how I feel about this right now. Um, it's about Bombito playing as a six. So, Alex tweeted out, um, John Herdman says that him and the Rapids staff see Bombito as a six long term. They see the potential or the midfield potential there, and they're missing that profile. Six foot three, strong, athletic, and great with his feet. He did look good on the ball today. So I want to hear what you guys think about Bombito. Let me know in the chat. I'm going to go through it there, but I'll give you guys my quick notes on that. So there's no question this kid's got talent. He has raw talent. This is his first season in Major League Soccer, but he's been playing mostly as a fullback. We've seen him up as a wingback. We know he can play as a center back. We have not seen him play as a center mid before or a, or, or a six before. And the fact that we put him in in his first ever Canadian men's national team appearance and start in a position he's probably not overly comfortable with, I don't think was the right call. Now, I think Bombito could potentially take on that role because I saw some good things from him last night. He's got very good distribution. He's a good passer. And do you know where that athleticism and that passing ability would have came in handy? In the back three. If you would have put one of the Torrey or McGraw in that midfield three with Miller on the left and then Bombito on the right, that three would have complemented each other a lot more, much better distribution, the speed to cover either McGraw or Victoria in the middle, because our two wingbacks, Lorea and Miller got caught up the pitch quite a bit. And that speed was definitely lacking. That's why I think a bit of the issue with our defense in our midfielders were caught a little bit. 
So I don't want to put too much on Bambito because he did impress me. And I don't disagree that maybe he's got the profile of a, a CM. But this is, you know, this is a tournament where we need to try to win, obviously. And putting players in positions they're not used to, especially when he's not even doing it at club level, maybe let the Rapids test it out first. Get some reps under your belt before tossing you into a brand new team, brand new system, brand new players in a position you're not used to. So with that being said, I'll let you guys digest a little bit on that, and then we'll get back into the chat. But those are some big points that stood out to me. Um, the biggest, yeah, Ali Ahmed is one to watch. He might be able to slot in there with Eustachio and Kone. Very promising. That was the best part of, and I tweeted out in the first half, and I got, they're like, no, he's not the best player in the pitch. Like, come on, uh, Ambrose was. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you know, that's fair. But I, I, I thought he was really growing into the game. And each minute that went by, he just looked more and more promising, like he was going to create something. And he did. He The second half, there's no doubt. And I don't think anyone can arguably debate it that he's the best player on the pitch. Ahmed is a baller. He's a, a profile player that we need in that midfield. Get the depth in there. And playing alongside of Eustachio and Kone could be very intriguing. If Alex was here right now, I know he'd be very excited because he talks very highly about Ahmed. And he was the number one player he was most excited to watch. And good reason for it. Um, disappointed with the reasoning as Bombito as a six. Um, yeah, I think I gave my, I gave my point. I should probably slide down the chat a little bit, but, um, I probably will. So sorry for skipping over some of the comments. I just, I got too caught up, but let me see what you guys are saying. Um, Herman can't teach Bombito to be a six left at the club. That's kind of what I was saying too. But like I said, like when it comes to having the ball, having possession, I just, I think if he would have, like, we would have looked a lot less vulnerable defensively if we had Bombito slid in there on the outside right with McGraw or Vittoria in the middle. That's, and then his distribution, he could get up in the play. He can combine like that, but he's got a role that he's used to. And I, and I, and I wonder what it means for Victor Laturi because Victor Laturi has been called up a few times now. He's yet to make his Canadian debut. He does not have a cap yet, despite being a natural six young profile playing in Europe and playing as a six, you're leaving him on the bench for Bombito, which again, I don't know that I dislike Bombito. I just would have liked to see him in a different position. And I'm just, I was just curious as to why that was a, the thing. And then the bigger thing is that Liam Frazier, the, the late addition to the squad was brought on instead of someone like Victor Laturi. So if I'm Victor Laturi, I'm wondering, you know, what's, what's going on here. And Vincent kind of goes on that point. Should have played Laturi as the DM let Colorado be the ones to experiment with Bombito at DM. I totally agree. Um, and that's that being said, guys, I do think Bombito looked good. Uh, like, I do. I just don't think he looked like, I don't know, it's like putting a very good player in a, in a position that he's not used to. It's like he's a good player. You're going to see good things from him that game, but there's something off. And that's the, kind of the way I looked at Bombito. But I do think he's got the profile to play in that back three. I just, I, it just would have made so much sense. And I think hopefully that's something that we can build later in the stream. We'll build our, our preferred starting 11 going forward. And I think we're going to see uh, a few changes. Um, Bombito was all right. First time I've ever seen him play, uh, but he had to come out in the second half. He looked lost. Yeah. Like, and again, it just comes with being young and playing in a new squad in a position you're not used to. That's why I said it didn't, didn't make a ton of sense. And I personally thought that this team was going to line up a little differently. And I tweeted it out very confidently. So I was wrong because I've, I've watched Bombito this season. I know that he can play as a left back. He's played as a left wing back. He's played as an outside back and a back three. But no, Herdman surprised me and put him in the midfield. I thought we would have played a 3-4-3. Three, three. So Borean would have been in net. And if it's funny how a quick switch would have basically put players in their position. So Borean would have been in net. Larea right wing back. Then you would have had McGraw on outside right. But I don't... I don't I'm not upset with Herman trying it. I just think we can all agree it didn't work. But McGraw would have been the outside right, Vittoria, Miller, left wing back. I thought that's where Bombito was going to go because he's played there before. He's done well there before. Left wing back, left back. It just made more sense to me. And then in the midfield, you would have had Ahmed and Azorio. Would have been a little vulnerable in the midfield. I don't disagree. But I mean, th this shape would have pretty much dominated the ball, I think, a little bit more. But Definitely would have been vulnerable in the midfield. I don't disagree. And then I would have had the two kind of wingers or inverted tens with uh, our inverted wingers with Hoylet and Miller. And then up front, I would have had Cavallini. So that's how I thought it was going to line up. It did not. And I think some of the issues came, like I said, with Miller having to be responsible at left wing back. I thought he had some very good 
spurts going forward. He looked very electric, I thought, in the beginning of the first half. He kind of died out a little bit. But I don't think him playing at left wing back is ideal for Miller. I think we've got to put him up in a winger role if we're going to start him. Maybe try ZBG as the right wing back, Larea at left wing back, proper wing backs that can do a job and let the attackers go further. But, you know, just a thought. Uh, Latouri would have been a better option, Bombito over either McGraw and Vittoria. Yeah, 100%. I think that looking at the game, like, like I said, I mean, it's tough, but we should get results out of, should get results out of Guatemala and Cuba, and it puts us still in good shape. But it's little things that I hope I hope Herman doesn't, doesn't get stuck on the fact that he wants to see Bombito. Or maybe because Herman's an intelligent guy, he wants to, you know, he wants to he wants to save Bombito a little bit. Because not that he played bad, but he now that we all know it's like we want to develop this kid as a six. We need sixes, you know? Instead of being like, oh yeah, like, you know, he maybe wasn't maybe wasn't the most ideal thing to play him there, but I think that he he will make a good outside center back in this tournament going forward, if that is indeed where um, he's going to play. How did Lee Miller play? I thought he had flashes. He showed his speed quite a few times. He kept getting to the byline, trying to whip in balls, trying to create things. That final end product wasn't really there. And I think playing, like I said, as a wingback, gave him a little bit more defensive responsibilities than he needed. And a lot of times we look vulnerable. He wants to get up. That's what Lee Miller do. He's a winger, not a like a wingback. So, I think sometimes when we were exposed the other way, Richie loves bombing up the pitch. Clearly so does Miller. And then it left basically a midfield who's also like, you know, you got Bombito in there basically, but the other two were flying up the pitch. And then you you do look vulnerable in counters. And defensively, our, our midfield and the back line looked a little bit all over the place. And I just think it came with just a couple tweaks. Like I, I don't think it's the end of the world, this result, but I definitely think some tweaks have to be made for something uh, to hopefully get a little bit better but i'm gonna bring up um my takeaways no that's not what we want that's what we want um and then let me know you got these are my, some of my full-time takeaways people did not like the uh the cavallini so i'll elaborate quickly before i get back into the chat so i said the back line was far from convincing and like i said i think a couple tweaks could help that I thought Ahmed was absolutely incredible. And the way that we talked about the 2021 Gold Cup being massive for Alistair Johnston, Tejan Buchanan, Maxine Crepeau, it looks like Ali Ahmed is going to have one of those type of tournaments already. I can't wait to see what he's going to do on the next few matches. Uh, I did really like the second half response. It sucks that a set piece in the end cost us three points. I thought Hoylet looked very good. And I got some complaints about that as well on Twitter. So saying that Hoylet... I guess you guys didn't think he looked overly well. Like, get, let me know in the in the in the comments because I thought Hoylet looked very good. I thought early on in that second half he looked like a game changer. He looked like the one player you needed to get the ball to for about 10, 15 minutes. He obviously almost won a penalty that was chalked off. He then had an unbelievable ball for Cavallini. He looked very good, and then we took him off. I don't know if he's fully fit, but I thought he looked like a game changer there. And if he gets those spurts of creativity i think he could be very useful for canada going forward in this tournament cavallini i just said he can bring goals i know a lot of you guys did not like cavallini's performance but you got to remember when you are a big focal point striker like that you do a lot of things that aren't, aren't flashy he's a big body he's expected to hold up the ball doesn't do a ton of impactful running but he can find the back of the net and cavallini has always proved that in the national team and that, that goal he scored was very, like, it was a well-taken goal. He picked up the ball nicely, had a very nice pass, perfect pass, really, to send on Hoylet, and then he made a good run into the box, dripped a little bit wide from the defender, got right where he needed to be to tap it home. Like, it was a good striker's goal, and that was the only point, is, like, whether you think he's the flashiest striker or the striker going forward that Canada needs, you can't question the fact that this man knows how to score for Canada, and that was what I was kind of taking. I do agree that... You know, he's a totally different profile than someone like Jonathan David or even Kyle Lahren. They like to drop deep, create space, touch the ball. It's not Cavallini's style. But I, I don't think we can question that he can find the back of the net. And then I just said horrible result because it's a bad result. This is not the start we wanted, not at home. The one game that we're gonna be play, that's going to be played in Canada this tournament, <laughs> we lost at home and got booed off. Not great for a young, um, young squad like this. And it's a tough way after, you know, an own goal like that, but... 
Um, Ahmed was outstanding in the second half. He was. I thought he was good through the entirety of the match, to be honest. And there was a in the in a press conference, he said, like, you know, he's just happy to be here. And I, I just think that's funny. It just shows what a nice and humble man he is because my guy, you <laughs> you deserve to be here. You, you were the best player on the pitch, in my opinion, and the, at least the best Canadian by far. Um, Ahmed, Bombito, Miller are the only bright spots from last night. I agree, but the funny thing is, is two of those players were playing out of position. Ahmed was incredible. Bombito, I thought, looked good, but I did think looked at sometimes a little, he questioned himself, maybe a bit of his positioning, where he needed to be. I genuinely think if you just slot him into that, it could be even, even a back four, but I think I like him more on the outside, like of a back three. I think that you'll get the best out of him there, and he will be able to cover your McGraws or your Vittorias. And Miller, I just don't know about left wing back. I know for a fact he doesn't like playing in that position. He got stuck there for Basel. When he was at his best for Basel, he's playing as a left, left attacking mid in a 4-2-3-1. He needs the ability to go forward and the license to roam. Uh, when you play as a wing back, you have defensive responsibilities. And against the teams like Mexico, Jamaica, USA, if we have players like Miller, Larea bombing up the pitch and you know, not really getting in the proper positions to, to get back, then we're going to be in a lot of trouble now. I know Atakubi would have been starting in that role, but I think Miller could be in for a good tournament. He just has to play a little further up the pitch. Whether we change up the shape, I don't know, but I don't know if I like him at the left wing back position. If we're doing wing backs, I would honestly rather Brogiard on the right and then probably Richie on the left or vice versa. Canada needs to have a set formation and tactical system. Just like a top footballing nations, go 4-3-3 three, three and get your best players in the best position. Best players in the best position, I agree with. Um, Herman loves sh shaving up the tactics. And I don't always agree. Like, I get what you're saying. When you take on national teams, like when you play Belgium, you knew it was a 3-4-3. Three, three. When you play Croatia, it was a 4-2-3-1. Spain, 4-3-3. Three, three. Brazil, somewhat of a 4-4-2. Four, four, I mean, they yeah. kind of change over the years. But I get what you're saying. But that's, I think, one of the things that give John Herman strength is that he can read his opposition. And a lot of the times he is able to tactically get it together, but let's be honest, since 2023 has started, Herman's not got the best results. So maybe it is time to just get a little bit simpler, but to be fair, he has kind of been running this three, five, two. So I, I would say if I'm looking at Herman right now with our a squad, B squad, C squad, whatever, the three, five, two is probably what we're going to run. And later in the episode, later in the stream, I'm going to build my Guatemala predicted starting 11. And I'm going to do it in a 3-5-2 because I just, I think that's our system. But the key point, as you said, is players need to play in their proper position. And there was too many players last night that were not playing there. Liam Frazier was steady out there. I, you know, I thought so too. Frazier dropped back. Uh, I, I do agree. I thought he did look pretty good which i was surprised well actually i shouldn't say i was surprised his he had a he had a club season to forget but we always know that he's able to perform with the national team and he did he looked he came on he looked very calm on the ball he's, he's a good passer he tried a couple long balls that didn't totally work but he was a good presence just sitting back in that six with what he can do i still don't know if i would have started him like i, I would like to see look if you're gonna test things out like a bombito at a six why not test out like why not test it Laturi in the six like that's that's a six that's someone who played there all season long he's used to this system and Ross County played in a three four or a three five two for most of the season so like I just it, that baffled me a little bit and you can still test out your Bombito but there's a lot of fresh faces a lot of guys got their first caps last night so I get it I think Herman can take a lot from this result and hopefully just tweak a couple things and he should be good to go for Guatemala because it's not the end of the world this result and I do think a lot of people don't understand that this Guadalupe side is was half decent. I still think we should have won. We should be expected to win. And I like that, you know, we, we are expected to win. But at the end of the day, I, I, I do think that this is going to be the other team that could go through in this group. Azorio did have a tough, tough outing. Azorio isn't fit and Herdman is, yeah, I'm going to, I'll get into that a little bit with, um, with the starting 11. Cause yeah, Azorio, part of that midfield issue, he did not look fully fit, made us look exposed at times as well but i do have a, i think i have a solution for my, the next starting 11 to put together but uh yeah he him and victoria um i'm gonna bring up alex's uh takeaways he had a few as well some of them kind of overlapped with mine but i know he mentioned i know he mentioned shaky from some of the vets so 
Alex's takeaway is missed opportunity in the first half in the last five minutes. Yeah. First half, you know, we didn't come out well, but we, you know, we, we dug out of that hole and we still should have saw it with the match, but then, you know, last five minutes set piece, two slot holes. Uh, the biggest one I liked from Alex's was the starting 11 had way too many out of position players, which we've touched on a, a lot. Midfield um, was all over the place defensively. I think that happened be- kind of because of Bombito not being used to the role, Azorio not maybe being fit, being a little bit too up. But I think a big part of that too is the wing backs were very high up the pitch and it left the back three very exposed. Uh, Ahmed was great and, I, and he agreed with me. Hoylet, I thought had a good game, but he said shaky from some vets. And when I look at that, I look at Vittoria clearly, I look at Azorio, and I would say maybe Kamal Miller could slide into that, but yeah. Um, that's, a, that's a good one. I like that. I wanted to, um, uh, they want to see Larea come off the pitch. Frank, you'll never see him again at BMO Field. I'm curious to see what's going to happen with Larea's future. I have no idea where he's going to go. Kind of hope he goes back to Europe. You know, it's going to suck for TFC, but I think that there's a place somewhere. I'd like to see him go to the Netherlands. Even Belgium, those are kind of the two leagues that stick out to me. But uh, we will get results against Guatemala, but watch out for Cuba. So I'm, I'm kind of kind of opposite. I think uh, out of those two, from what I saw, I think Guatemala is a better team. I think Cuba's. I think personally, it should go Canada, Guadeloupe, Guatemala, Cuba. From what from what I've seen, but maybe maybe Canada just made Guadeloupe look a lot better. But I thought they were. It was a decent performance from them, to be honest. Kevin, looking handsome today. Thank you, my friend. Kind of needed that. Um, Ahmed, that's my new guy. Yeah. Worst player on the pitch, Victoria Borean, completely got exposed because of their agility and pace. Yeah, I saw KJ in the uh, post game talking about how he hopes Dane St. Clair gets a, gets a run. And he mentioned something very important too, like playing out of the back, playing with possession. And I, I talked about it very earlier in the stream, but if you're just joining us, drop a like on the stream, give me guys, you guys the biggest takeaway. But that was a good one that KJ pointed out was, I mean, he wants to see Dane St. Clair get opportunities because he thinks he's ready. I think a lot of us think Dane St. Clair is ready for this role. We were probably expecting him to get this tournament the same way Maxine Crepo got the 2021 Gold Cup. But I personally think Borean's here because of what's going on with his club situation. You know, he's, he's, he's a leader. He's, he's a legend in Canadian football, in my opinion. And maybe Herman wanted to you know, get him involved just to get his mind off of that horrible way that his club treated him and basically kicked him out of the club. So... You know, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. I was hoping and thinking that this would have been St. Clair's tournament, but just even on the tactical side of things, when you're playing with possession, you're playing out of the back, I think two big changes that would have helped, like I said, Dane St. Clair, who's good with his feet, he's young, the profile who should be in net for the 2026 World Cup, and then Bombito, I think having that playing ability, that passing ability out of the back, he would have complemented that back three so well. I love it. Him out on the outside right, Miller, and then your McGraw Victoria, like, for me, it's it's clear as day that he could almost try to replicate in a, in a different kind of way, but that Alistair Johnson in, in the coverage he provides to someone like a Victoria, and even to someone like Richie Larea, allowing him to bomb up the pitch like we saw. That was a part of the issue, I think, the flanks, because we have two very attacking wingbacks. And even with our A squad, whether it's Buchanan, Larea, Davies, these guys need to rely on your, Mil- your Kamal Millers and your Alistair Johnsons to give them the, those licenses to go forward. So a lot of a lot of issues with that. That I think, like I said, a couple of tweaks can kind of can kind of change the day a little bit. Um, what would be the end of the world result? Our standards are so low. Oh, I mean, if we would have lost, that would have been tough. I think, like it's a, it's it's our standards aren't low. I mean, if you would have wa- if you would have seen the fans last night, they booed these players off. These are a lot of young players making their debuts, and there was no love lost. The fans were not happy. There's 15,000 people there that booed off the Canadian national team because they drew 2-2 at home against Guadeloupe. I don't think our stand I don't think that means our standards are low. I think it would have been more of a disaster if we would have lost. I think drawing was a poor result, but like I said, this is a brand new group. I th- it's hard to know what Herman sees behind the scenes and maybe why he couldn't have why he came to these conclusions from what he saw in training, but from what I saw on the pitch there's a couple obvious changes and a lot of it comes from player rotation moving them into their proper positions. I mean, a little bit more urgency, I think, to start off. But, you know, like we're still in a decent position. If we can go out and play well and score a good chunk of goals against Guatemala and Cuba, we can still top this group, So, which is like no harm, no foul. But 
I know if we don't end up top in the group, it could be an issue. But regardless, we're going to get stuck playing Jamaica and, or the U.S. probably. And one of those sides will have Mexico in it. So I'm pretty sure that right now the likely scenario is if we top our group, we're going to have to go through Jamaica or the States, and then we're going to take on Mexico. So, you know, it doesn't sound, sounds kind of dangerous to me. You might get lucky finishing second, but I don't want to. I still want to see this, this side go in here and get six points in the next couple of matches, top the group, and then see what we can do from there. I didn't get the sub. Hoylet was dominating the second half. I was surprised too. I don't I don't fully understand why he got subbed off. I thought he was just finding his groove. When a, when a player is getting in those kind of positions and, and creating something out of nothing, that's someone you want to go for. That's someone who can win you a match. That being said, though, I don't again, we don't know the fitness levels of Hoylet. A lot of players know beforehand. I'm not saying that they did like Hoylet did, but a lot of players know beforehand about how long they're going to go. I didn't want to see. Hoylet go off because, I, like I said, I thought he was kind of taking over the match a little bit. Uh, a lot of good things were coming through him, but maybe because of the fitness issues at the end of the season, he was only given the green light to go what he did. So we'll see. Um, Russell Rowe did score. Yeah, unfortunately, it was in the it was in the other uh, other net. <laughs> um, Cavallini did his job. Uh, lay guys out there in the back. He got his he got his yellow card. Headbutted another, scored a goal. Could have stopped one of their CBs. <laughs> yeah. um, I wouldn't say he played great. I just, like I said, he's a very different type of striker. And because a lot of the time he's quiet and you don't notice him, doesn't mean he's not doing anything, but I get like, he's just a totally different striker to watch from your Jonathan David, especially someone like Jonathan David, who likes dropping, combining, looks much more active at times. Even Kyle Laren likes doing the same thing. And it's why when we start in this three, five, two, when Laren and David are on the pitch together, they sometimes run into their own space and it's reasons why we think that they sometimes don't gel together and work together. Cavallini is not that type of striker. In reality, a player or striker like Cavallini should complement a player like Jonathan David very well. But in times like this, you know, he's quiet, but he scored his goal. And the biggest question coming into this window for me was where the goal is going to come from. We don't unfortunately have, a game changer, at least yet in my eyes. Like we don't have our David, we don't have our Laren, we don't have our Davies Buchanan. We don't have that guy who can take on a game. And in 2021, that player ended up being Tejon Buchanan. I remember that Mexico game where he basically played as, I mean, he played where he wanted. He was a free roam. He went to the right, he went to the left. He was the guy you needed to give the ball to. Um, and in that semifinal, we had Akindeli starting as our striker. So we didn't have barely any options. This team, I think, will struggle to score goals. I mean, we scored two tonight, which is great, but co like coming up against U.S., Jamaica, Mexico, whoever it is, that's where I think some issues were going to come in. And I think that's why Herman wants to rely on someone like a Cavallini. He's got a proven track record. Despite how he's playing throughout the match, he will run, he will hold up the ball, he will cause havoc, and find the back of the net. He may not be the most, might, might not be the most beautiful style to watch, but, you know, he scored a goal. That's where some concerns are going to come in. But I don't know. Give me a rating, guys, out of 10. How would you rate Cavallini's performance last night? I will start. I gave it a 7.5. I'm just, I'm curious. Because, like I said, in my five takeaways, when I just basically said Cavallini can score goals, you guys are like, what game are you watching? Cavallini was horrible. It's like, well, I just said he could score. And, you know, I didn't say he was a you know, game changer out there. But this is a big striker who can put the ball back in the net. Um, let's talk about the elephant in the room, Herdman. I mean, I, I think I kind of did. You can elaborate, Roberto, if you want to. I with with Herdman, I think some of the the biggest issues literally came before kickoff. It just the way he lined up the side. I don't, you know, I don't understand a lot of the decisions. I'd I'd like to. I'd like to see what he was seeing in training leading up to this, where he's like, you know what, we're we're going to start Bombito as a six instead of a Latouri. We're going to start Liam Miller which I can see because he played there for Basel, if that's the only logic. But if you watch Liam Miller this season, he really struggled as, as a wingback. It's not his best position. I bet you he will tell you that himself. He's a winger. And when I've seen Liam Miller play at his best, it's because he's playing as a left attacking mid. He's got the license to do what he does best. And unfortunately, we don't really play in that style right now with his 3-5-2. So if you want to get a Liam Miller on the pitch, it does kind of seem like it needs to be a wingback. But you could go 3-4-3. 
I don't know. Maybe against Guatemala and Cuba, you can do that, but I don't think you can pull off that system, especially with this midfield against your, your heavy hitters in this competition. But yeah, there is some, some there is some heavy question marks around the team. Um, I think a little bit goes on the players when it comes to intensity in that first half. I don't really put that on Herman, but again, it could also be led down to the way you set this team up, which if I know Herman, like I think I do, I, I think he'll learn from this and he'll change. He'll take a look at what he did, what, what went, what went wrong and he can easily correct it because it's not that hard to say like, you know, there's some good things that we had there, but you know, let Ali Ahmed do what he's doing. Try to give him freedom. Let's maybe cover up the back a little bit. Maybe, you know, bite his pride a little bit and be like, you know what, Bambito, you didn't quite work the way I wanted to. And maybe that was just a test. We're doing this one match. Let's shift you around. And there's still some players on the bench that can make a difference as well. So I also thought, which a player I have not mentioned yet. I thought Brim looked very good coming on. I think that he is a totally different striker than Cavallini. And you saw it the way that he similar to kind of like Jonathan David wants to get a little bit more involved when he can, he dropped deep. I remember that one touch. I think it was pretty close to the halfway line. He just had that little, little touch that almost like he got the ball from behind him to get it in front of him. He ended up losing it, but he he's a, he's a creative player. He's quick as well. He can take on defenders one V one. He might, he may be one looking to start in the next match. I just don't really know in my mind right now who to start him up front alongside. If Herman does not win the gold cup, he should be fired. Uh, I would disagree for a couple different reasons. The biggest one is you brought a B squad to the Gold Cup when Mexico brought their A squad, Jamaica brought their A squad, the U.S. brought their B squad, but their B squad won the last one. They got more. They got. I would say I don't know how to word that. Not that they have more experience, but they've proven that they can do it in the past with B squads, and some of these guys had a little bit more experience up as well, like playing together. So, actually, I don't even know if that's true. They're B squads, but the fact is the one B squad won the Gold Cup last edition and the Canadians did not. So I don't think it's fair to be like, you know what, if if Canada brought their A squad and did not win this competition, I think there'd be a little bit more pressure on John Herman because if they brought their A squad, I would say that they're expected to win this tournament. I don't look at this squad and being like, you know, they expect this team should should win. So I don't think it's fair to be like, all right, John Herman, you didn't you didn't get you know, you're playing with one hand and you No, I don't I don't I don't agree with that. But let me know if you guys think that it's win, win or bust like i'd like to see this team go deep but i am realistic and after seeing that first game i think her, things are gonna have to change very quickly whether it's a, hopefully like shifting some tactics the formation the players and it just clicks because after seeing that first game my confidence of winning this tournament are, are a lot lower but it doesn't mean that you know herman can learn from this and hopefully get the team playing a different way i just I just think when it comes to the big boys right now, it's going to be difficult. We're struggling with what was called the easiest group in the gold cup. So I don't think it'd be fair to fire him. I think he'll be here and he should be here till 2026. I think some que some question marks are at, or should be asked because I don't agree with a lot of what he did in the build up to this game with, with the squad, but we'll have to see if he learns from it. Most disappointing draw USA or Canada, Canada, by a mile the u.s drew uh jamaica the jamaica side who is probably the best jamaica side we've seen on on paper in a very long time they had a penalty as well they were leading they you know they should have won that's it's it's almost a, an impressive point for for the u.s canada on the other hand was expected to win they were at home the only match at home in canada in this gold cup and they got booed off i think that that tells you i don't think it's even close the point was half decent for the the states and the result for canada was just purely disappointing half decent they aren't even ranked you well, let's see let's see just let's see the way that this rest of this group goes out because either canada played so bad that they made the squad loop side look half decent or this team is actually half decent and not that not that canada should ever lose to this side but i think when you look at some of the players they like i know that they're not a ranked nation but there are some good ballers in there like Ambrose scored, I think, seven or something goals in the Belgian top flight. There's a couple of players playing in Liga. Um, their captain plays for Torino. Like, there's not bad players in here. On paper, I would argue Guadeloupe is the second best in this group. But hey, I mean, let's see. Roger, I will take back what I said if Guatemala and Cuba slap around Guadeloupe. But like I said, from what I watched last night, and if you're making me put money on it, I would put it on Guadeloupe. I think that they're 
have to have, they're a better nation than what, what maybe a lot of people thought because they're unranked. They're not a ranked nation, but we will see. USA sent a C team total joke of a roster. Like they don't even value the cup. Well, I mean, they did it last time and they won the cup. <laughs> they put their A squad out, won Nations League, and then they sent their B or C or whatever you want to call it team to the Gold Cup and they won that. So, um, yeah, I, you know, it is what it is. I, it's, it's tough. Um, I don't think the Nations League helped. Like, I tried to explain this a lot, but it's just like when players want a little bit of rest or they want transfers, like Jonathan David looking for a transfer this summer, I mean, there's reasons like Atakubi and Eustachio dropped out for personal reasons. Um, there's a lot of reasons why this month long potential six match tournament could interfere. It's also leading right up until when teams start training. And if you're getting a new transfer already, or you're maybe you're on the outside looking in of your club, you want to be there for preseason, all of it. So there's, I get there's a lot of reasons. And then when you give a nation or these nations an opportunity to win a trophy right before a gold cup that only takes two matches to me. I know I get it, but I, to me, it makes a lot of sense. If I'm Davies, David, Pulisic, Gio, Reyna, like I'm taking a look and be like, all right, let's send our best guys. Cause it's two matches, man. Semis, finals, trophy, celebration, rest. It, to me, it makes sense. I like the players that play in both, but I do. I don't think that this trend is going to change anytime soon. I, I just don't maybe one time, you're going to see an all-star studded Canadian side. Maybe that's just desperate to win the gold cup because you may, or maybe you see that swap. Like in hindsight, Canada could have sent their, you know, their B squad to the nation's league and then all a squad in the gold cup and probably been favorites. But again, you now have to convince these players that playing that two match tournament to win a trophy, they got to outweigh the pros and cons and coming in for a six match stretch that like i said could affect transfers could affect preseason it could affect just rest and being with your family or recovery like so that's that's the best i can explain it from my mind as to why we're not going to see something like these b and c rosters change the u.s squad is very beatable it is i, I don't disagree with that honestly josh we did not respect guadalupe at times uh we defended with a two three of our slowest players yeah, no, I, that's what, I mean, that's part of the issues that, like, I said is, and it's not that we didn't respect them. I mean, it's hard to know what to get from the Guadalupe side, but like I said, they were better than what I anticipated. It's just the way that this side was set up. You have two very attacking fullbacks in Richie Larea and then an, a winger playing as a fullback in Liam Miller. You then in the midfield have o Osorio, who does not look fit, does not look like he's going to do anything defensively. Ahmed, who was very attacking and rightfully so. He was one of the best players getting involved. Then I just leave Bombito playing a position he's not used to and hardly ever played. And then when your wing backs are up the pitch like that and you're stuck with just Bombito in the middle, then you have your three center backs, one of two of which are very slow and didn't really mesh well together. I don't think McGraw played poorly. I thought he did the best with his abilities, but his strengths are clearly meant to play in a back four or in that middle of the back three. So I think those are the reasons we look so vulnerable in transition and Guadalupe punished us. There's also just poor defending. The goals were sloppy, the set pieces, not being able to, to mark your guys. And it just, that was just a really tough way to concede a late goal. And then I'm not sure what Vittoria was doing, but he got pretty much knocked to the ground. And Orion, like I said, looked like he slipped when he came out off his line. I don't know if that would have affected anything, but a lot of defensive issues there. And I'm hoping we can kind of change that. I'm legit worried uh, Vittoria and Borean will be around for 2026. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we do have, like, we have some other tournaments coming up. We have obviously the Copa America and then like the World Cup. Nations League starts again. Like there are a lot of competitions coming up that it makes, like, we don't need to completely, completely eliminate them, I guess. But I do, I just don't think that this tournament was right. I have no problem with Vittoria being there. And I don't, I don't even have an issue with trying the McGraw Victoria, but just like I'm, so I'm like I'm wondering what Herdman was seeing in like the training sessions, um, which is which is a lot difficult, a lot different to analyze when you see him in a match because I just thought like it just didn't work. Um, but maybe if Victoria had a, a game that we know he can, it would have looked different. But uh, I I still think a lot of pundits and fans want to see Saint Clarinet, and I don't really have a reason as to why we're not seeing him. But maybe that'll happen this week.
people do miss dismissing Guadeloupe who have players playing in Syria, Belgium, Switzerland, and Liga in the past. Yeah, like I said, I said they're half decent nation. They're better than what you would think that they they would they, they they've taken strides to recruit some of these players. So um I thought they looked good. Yeah. Well, a lot of you guys are sticking up for Guadalupe. They ain't no pushovers. Um, I, like I said, I mean, I don't know. Let me know, guys, if you watched the games yesterday between Cuba and uh, Guatemala. I, I don't know. Like, it's either, like I said, either Canada played really bad and it's thrown off what I should think, or Guadalupe, you know, is a good, a pretty, pretty decent side that might be able to push to get out of this group. But I asked the question a while ago, and I forgot I asked it. I said, give me a rating on Lucas Cavallini. Because like I said, I put out my takeaways and I just said that he can score goals. He's not the prettiest player out there to watch. He gets lost a little bit sometimes. He's very quiet through stretches. The man can score for Canada. and You can't deny that. So I gave him a 7.5 out of 10. So let's see what you guys gave him. 7, 7, 7. couple 7s. Seven. So, you know, it's not bad. You know, it's not bad. It's not a game of 3 or a 4. I don't think he, like I said, I don't think Cavallini had a horrible match. I don't. And I think, honestly, he might be our best bet scoring goals. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. Why did Canada bring the beat? Okay, well, I just explained all that. So I need to, I'm going to skip down. Sorry, guys. If you had any questions I did not answer, just toss them back. I'm just skipping down the line. Um, and I hope my logic between the gold cup and nations league makes a lot of sense to you guys. That's the way that I see it. Uh, just, and that's just like from the player's perspective, that's what I would imagine. But, but all right, let's, uh, let's create our starting 11 for the Guatemala game. This is the most excited part of the stream for me because I have a lot of thoughts. Um, where are we? All right. So here is the Gold Cup squad. Now, I, of course, Cavalini is our, yeah. But all right. So let me know who you guys want to see. Now, I don't want to, mm, I, yeah, I don't want to change up the system because I want to try to be realistic. Let's just assume that Herman is going to go with the 3 5 2 just because that's kind of what he's shown. There's probably a reason for it. Now, give me your guys's... Let's just start in net. Who do you want in net? We'll build this together as a team. Um, so let me know who you want to see between the sticks. The three keepers I've already kind of built in a way, um, but you guys can give your guys' opinions as well. But... I put St. Clair. I hope St. Clair gets a run. I don't think Borean was... I thought he made a couple of pretty good saves. I was a little questionable on that first goal he gave up. Nothing he could do but the second. But I just think it's it's time and it's fair to give St. Clair a, a go. I think if he plays well against Guatemala, you give him Cuba and you give him the rest of the tournament. I think Borean is mature enough and he's a leader on this team to understand that you know maybe it's time. But it really wouldn't surprise me if Borean goes again. But I like I said, I really hope that St. Clair gets the nod. So... I'm going to say St. Clair. We got, we got Yashin in net. I think that's fair. Uh, we got two, three, four St. Clairs, one Borean. Which is Roger, you surprised me a little bit there. St. Clair, St. Clair. McGill, why not? Hey, I mean, I'm not against it, but I, I... The same way that we put... like We put a lot of young players giving them their first caps. I'm not against McGill get, getting... A rep. I just think this is this is just it just seems like it's St. Clair's opportunity. The same way like the last tournament seemed like it was Crepeau's. Like St. Clair is not a young man. I'm pretty confident he's 26 years old. Let me just double check. Like, you know, he's been around for a while. He's been with a lot of uh, in, in a lot of Canada camps. He just he doesn't get the starts. He is he is 26. So he's 26 years old. So this seemed like the tournament for him. He's playing pretty well. It's not the best. Um been not the best season for him so far. Minnesota had a hot start, but I just still feel like it's fair. But all right, let's go to your back three. Give me your back three. You can tell me why, but 
the back three I would go with for the second match is Bombito as outside right center back, McGraw and Miller. Now, my reasoning is that, like I said, I don't think we should continue Bombito as a six. The experiment wasn't a, wasn't a complete failure, but I, I think that it would make a little bit more sense to try to play to his strength. I think that he's young. I think he can go this next game. I think at the outside right center back with his passing, his ability, his speed, he'll complement someone like Richie Larea going forward and McGraw. I just think it's a no-brainer to start him there. He plays a lot on outside left for the Rapids, but, I mean, we have lefties. You could go Kennedy. You could go Miller. I think Kennedy, after his shaky Nations League final match, is maybe why I, I, I would say Miller still. But, I mean, if you, need, if you can go either or for this next match, it wouldn't really bother me. And then after Vittoria's performance, his age, there's just no way he'll start. I think McGraw could easily take on that role. And that's the back three I would do. Now, all three started, so, like, I don't know what I don't know how much rotation is going to go into this, but I do think in, if we play back three, it has to be McGraw in the middle. Probably Kennedy might get a rep at outside left, and, I mean, maybe Zator, but like I said, I think Bombito could, if he's given, if he's not given the defensive midfielder role, I think you could, you could slot him in here and he'd be good to go. That would be my back three, and like I said, I really like this back three. If you put Kennedy in there, the speed of this back three, or at least on the two outside um, center backs, is a lot quicker than it would have been. And I think McGraw would be a lot more comfortable playing there. The only question I would have for McGraw is, I'm, I, I don't know how his distribution really is. I haven't seen him ever play in a back three as the central center back. He usually plays in a back four. His distribution's all right, but I think he's going to have a little bit more responsibility in the middle of a back three in terms of passing and distribution. So that's definitely one to keep an eye on. But uh, you guys are saying Bombito, McGraw, Miller. So Gordon's sticking with Vittoria. I don't think there's any way Vittoria starts again, just again, with his, with his age. Um, but that's why I'm like, McGraw will probably, with his age, I mean, he's 26, he, he'll be fine to probably go again in the middle. And then I think Bombito will, who got a little bit of rest in this game. And then probably, honestly, Kennedy, even though I would go Miller if he's if he's ready to do that. And maybe they rest some of these guys in the in the third game. But I'd be surprised if Victoria starts. Uh, On to the wingbacks. I think this is a, a curious one. I would like to see Brogiard start. So I'm I'm going to go like this. I would, I would like to see Larea swap flanks. And and go like that. I'd like to just I I don't know. Am I crazy? Let me know. Let me know the wing backs. Who's the two wing backs you would go with? Because I just I mean I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm torn. I just I I'm torn. I'm torn. I'm torn. I'm. Because I, I, I don't hate what Liam Miller did. I just don't think this is his best position. So now you're playing two players in their proper roles. Rogiard has played pretty well for Canada when we've seen him. I know he scored that one rocket for them. He's definitely fresh because he doesn't get the reps for CF Montreal. I think he'd be fine. He got coverage there with Bombito. Lorea, we know, can thrive on either flank. So, I mean, if we're just talking proper positions, Lorea... And Brogiard makes a little bit of sense there. The only other players you can maybe go, I mean, I wouldn't start Nelson there. I don't know if I'd do Miller again. You could maybe put Hoylet there. I just, I'm not sold on it. And I don't think Shaft would be any different than starting a, a Miller. So, I mean, just in terms of proper positioning, maybe helping us a little bit defensively against a decent Guatemala side. I don't know. Uh, Larea and Miller. Larea and maybe Schaffelberg. Schaffelberg came on and it was a like for like. So he he went at left wing back for um for Miller. I do I I'd like I wouldn't mind it. I just like I said, I mean you can maybe even go like a 4-2-3-1. Just hear me out. We're not going to do it, but right mm, yeah, you know you could. Yeah, 4 2 3 one you'd probably have to play Rogiard at right back. Maybe McGraw and Miller, your two center backs, Larea, or maybe Kennedy. McGraw and Kennedy as your two center backs. Larea at left back. Laturdy as your kind of your DM. Ahmed as your eight. Hoyletter Azorio as your 10. And then you have 
you could do Miller and Schaffelberg as your two wingers, maybe Brim on the wing and then Cavalini up front, but I don't think he's going to do that. So uh, a lot of you guys are saying Schaff and Richie, which I don't mind. I don't mind. Just like I, I mean, again, maybe just with the back three could allow playing with a little bit more of attacking threat there, but yeah, it seems like the chat wants to see Richie at right wing back and Schaffelberg at left wing back, which is totally fair. All right, on to the midfield. I think this is the best question. Three man midfield. Who who are we going for? Chaff did it for Bob Bradley once upon a time. Schaffelberg, same as Liam Miller, though. Like, that's my reasoning is I don't think you're going to get the best out of Schaffelberg or Liam Miller in this system. Like, if you switch up the shape, even if you play 3 4 3, then you have them on the wings, totally fine. But if you play them in this system, you won't get the best. But it's it's all hypothetical, guys. Like, I don't know. Maybe Herman sh 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 switches up to a 3 4 3, 4 2 3 1, and then you could see them on their wings where they play. But for me, I don't know. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go ZBG and uh, and Larea. Three man midfield: Laturi, Ahmed, Hoylet. That's what I got. That's what we're none of the above. Ahmed. So I don't think that would work actually, just because there's absolutely no defensive ability really, in, or there's not enough defensive ability in there. Um, especially the way that Oso played, I think that he should probably get the night off. Hoylet got brought off a little bit early. Maybe you give him the 60 minutes in this next match. But that's what that my logic was Laturi. But honestly, if I'm looking, if I'm Herman, I'm, I wouldn't surprise me if Herman starts Frazier as the six, but I'd give Laturi the rep. Basically, do what you did with Bombito. Give him the role to play as a six, like we know he can. Gives and he's a he's a much he's an actual six. So I don't know if that'll change the maybe the, the mindset or the the defensive stability and allow Ahmed to keep doing what he's doing. Cause we looked very uh, thin there from time to time, but Ahmed has to start again. I mean, play this kid as much as we possibly can. And then as the, the cam, like I said, I mean, I don't know if I'd start Azorio again, just because he didn't look overly fit. And maybe he's one of the subs to come on. Cause he played all 90. So that just is the reason. I don't know. Hoylet went 65 so i just think he'd be a little bit more fresh you could start him in the mid in the mid like that can maybe even go 442 i just think we'd be thin in the midfield i don't i don't know ahmed spoony laturi and that's that's another one that's a much more not well-rounded you lose a little bit of creativity without azoria or hoylet in there but you probably get a little bit more defensive stability in there i don't mind that one at all curious to see how spoony would do he was a he was warming up for a little bit. It looked like he was going to come on, but he, he ended up getting completely rested. So, yeah. I mean, I can see a few different things. Like, I want to see Laturi, but it wouldn't surprise me if we saw Frazier. Ahmed has to start again, surely. And then that other midfielder, it could be Wallerspoon. It could be Hoylet. I don't really know. And then, all right. Now it's time for the two strikers. Very curious to see what you guys are going to stay for the strikers. I don't want to see Osorio in the midfield for Canada anymore. He's just too slow, not strong enough. With the physicality of CONCACAF, too injury prone, too many back passes. Uh, I think you're li being a little little harsh, but the game last night I don't think did him any favors. So um, It's not that I don't want to see Osorio because I do think he has a role to play for Canada, but the fact that he went 90, I don't think he had an overly strong match. I'd be shocked to see him again. Um... I don't know. I'm I'm torn a little bit, but I think this is what we're going to see. I I, I don't think that I, I don't think we're going to see Russell Rowe. Cavallini scored. I'd be shocked if we don't see Cavallini. And I thought Brim looked really good as well coming on. So that is the two strike. If we do a two striker system, Brim can play off. He can drop back like he can. I think he would be a type of striker that could complement a Cavallini pretty well. And then Cava just kind of does what he does get that big body in areas and, and hope that he's, you know, can score some goals. So this would probably be mine. My starting 11 would be the three, five, two St. Clair and net broke at right wing back, Bombito McGraw, Miller, your three center backs, Larray at left wing back, Laturi, Ahmed, Poilette as your three 
center mids, and then Brim and Cavallini up front. You could even do the 4-4-2, which would be St. Clair. Honestly, you could do... I mean, you could do Bombito at right back. Could do Bombito or ZBG take your pick at right back. McGraw, Miller, or probably McGraw and Kennedy as your two center backs. Larea left back. Right mid, you could then throw your Liam Miller um, or your Schaffelberg, whatever one on that wing. Then you're, you'd have to have a six in there. So it would have to be like Luturi and probably Ahmed as your two center mids. Left mid would then be your Schaffelberg and your two strikers could be Brim and Cavallini. A little more attack-minded side, so I don't mind that at all. We'll have to see. Cavallini, Schaff, Cavallini, and I'd say Brim. I'd say Brim. Hopefully they go 4-4-2. Um, he could be... Uh, Miller could be an attacking focal point. And honestly, I might make up a little 4-4-2. We've seen a 4-4-2 a lot. We're, we've all been screaming up for that three-man midfield. But I don't know. Cavallini is our guy. We need him as a strong man. Uh, you want to maybe see Schaffelberg up there? I, I would... The only reason I'm going Brim is because I think Brim is very mobile. He is a good finisher. He can hit hit it from outside the box. He'll drop deep. He'll combine. He's a good striker to complement a striker like Cavallini. Schaffelberg, I, he has, can play in that role as well. I just don't think he's got the finishing ability. Um, I, like As Brim does, I think Brim's just a better finisher, and I think we might need that as, as a team that might struggle to score goals. But I don't know. I'm torn either way. Your lineup is all right, considering the lack of resources. Yeah, the like I said, I might make a graphic of the 4-4-2. And I probably will. Because I, I think the 4-4-2 one um, is, is intriguing as well. Herman only goes 4-4-2 in bleak circumstances like the Nations League final. <sighs> like, I would like... I mean, there's so many different scenarios and in, in teams that we could try to put together. Ah... Uh, yeah, like I don't know, man. I don't think he'll play, like I, I don't think he will go four two three one or four three three. I think we will see a three five two, maybe four four two in the next match or two. But I don't know, guys. I'm torn. But that was fun. I uh, appreciate you guys tuning in to the morning after stream. There was a lot to talk about. <laughs> you guys. Uh, were a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to go over my final little takeaways here to see if I missed anything. But just as a quick recap, if you guys haven't dropped a like so far on the stream, do so on your way out. And the quick recap takeaways was this. Backline, far from convincing. Ali, Ali Ahmed has been incredible. Man of the match could be in for a good tournament. Set pieces hurt us. Cavallini can be a difference maker. Cav or Hoylet can be a difference maker. Cavallini will probably bring the goals. Missed opportunity, bad result. It's complete. Uh, we can conceded a couple sloppy goals. Starting eleven, very questionable. A lot of players out of position. Midfield was a little bit all over the place defensively. Same as the wing backs. Shaky performances from some of our vets like Miller, Azorio, and and Vittoria. But I mean, a little harsh on on Kamal Miller there. Um, curious to see what they do with Bombito going forward. The fact that Herman said that they see him as a six. Don't know if it's ideal for this. Tournament may, may be going forward. Uh, Guadalupe aren't a bad side. And we could have used Matthew Schwanier. That is it. Those are those are the takeaways. Uh, we will be back for the morning after stream on Sunday after the match between Canada and Guatemala. Alex will be joining me. He was just, like I said, he was on a flight back to BC. So he will be back with me for that one. Hopefully see you guys there. Thank you, Josh. Great stream. Thanks, Josh. Not easy. Well done. Cheers, Josh. Next time. Appreciate the love, my friends. We will see you guys soon. Drop a like on your way out. Drop a sub if you're new. And we will talk to you guys on Sunday. Cheers, friends.